welcome to the Relationship Series Podcast. My name is Ankush Jain, and each episode I'll be speaking to a different state of mind expert on the subject of relationships. Enjoy. Welcome to episode 26 of the Relationship Series. This week I'm joined by Gabriella Maldonado Montana. I'm very excited to have her on board. She is the co-founder of True Change Consultants, which is a business coaching firm, but she's worked in a variety of uh, different fields, worked with businesses, worked with children, worked with incarcerated youths, exec teams, uh, you name it, she's got a a wide, wide kind of um, range of experiences, and she's been a state of mind expert since 1996, so, uh, you know, nearly a couple of decades of, of experience behind her. Um, and she's bilingual. She's born in Mexico and, and resides in, in America. So uh, welcome. Welcome, Gabriella. Good to have you here. Thank you, Ankush. Nice to be here. Um, Gabriella and I met about, I think it was a week ago or two weeks ago, virtually via Skype. Mm-hmm. And I have spoken to a lot of state of mind experts, but I, I think I had more fun on that call and was laughing more you know, mm-hmm. than, I, than I've done in a, in a very long time. So I think this is going to be a very fun interview. Um, and mm-hmm. I'm, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hopefully having more of that energy on, on this call too. Mm-hmm. Yes, because remember, if it's not fun, Ankush, I don't do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the rule. <laughs> we'll we'll do our best to make it a make it a fun inter- interview then. Um, so I I know a bit more about your background, but just for our listeners, would you just mind um, telling them a little bit of a, your story, how you came across um, the principles behind State of Mind in '96, what your kind of journey's been a little bit, and how is it that you've seemed to get involved in so many different areas, which on the surface mm. looks so different, you know, from business to incarcerated youths. But, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but but how you've kind of gone about that? Mm-hmm. Well, I was really lucky. So I was, I think it was my junior year in college, in university, and I was sent to a training, and I just didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, there were a few people in our agency that got um, to go, and it was the timing was perfect because actually I was going through a divorce. And I was feeling pretty crappy. Um, Actually, I was feeling like I was breaking, really. Um, And because I worked in a nonprofit counseling agency, everyone around me told me that this feeling of distress was going to last at least a couple of years. And I I just thought, oh, you got to be kidding me. You know, I, I just, I don't think I could do it, right? So anyway, I got to this training and I hear... Uh, Dr. Roger Mills, who has passed since, and it's uh, Amy Mills' father, I hear him say, it doesn't matter what you've gone through. You are intact, and you are whole, and you are complete. And as I heard that, Ankush, it was like a little bell inside my soul woke up. And I remembered this to be true. I knew this in my soul because I have gone as a child through many really intense um, circumstances. So as I hear this little bell of um, wisdom waking me up inside of myself, I just felt relieved. Immediately, immediately I just felt like this is true. And so it was a powerful experience for me. And at the time... Uh, I was working at a school doing prevention work for the nonprofit that I was working with. And I just went back the next day and uh, started talking to kids about it. Uh, and it was, you know, in our conversation, our prior conversation, I told you that it was remarkable in hindsight to see me the first day physically, the way that I was dressed, the way that I felt. And then the second day after I heard that, it was just a complete, like an 180 degrees. Uh, difference. So could you describe for us, the, the people that are listening, what was the change? So how did you dress before and then what did you dress oh. differently? What, what, what was the difference? <laughs> oh my goodness. The first day, I just remember this, I was wearing tennis shoes and sweats, you know, like athletic pants, like you go running and, uh, you know, I don't even think I was wearing makeup, which is not like me, you know, because I like to dress up and 
sweatshirt and just uh, kind of grayish. You know, my outfit was gray, I remember. And uh, my energy was low. I felt tired. Um, and then the next day, I was just wearing, uh, you know, a suit and I did my hair, but, you know, high heels and the whole thing. But what was important, what's important about your question really is not so much the difference in change as far as my way, the way that I was dressed, even though it was dramatic. It's that the way that I was dressed really was a reflection of how I was feeling at the moment. I was just so um, in so much pain the first day that I went to the training. And the second day, I was just relieved. It's almost like I went back to myself. And that you could see visually outside. So, you know, it's just really, in, in speaking with you, I just realized how instantaneous that change was for me and how relieved I was that I didn't have to feel like that for today. You know, it wasn't court mandated. It wasn't uh, a must that I really, in the midst of going through a divorce, could feel well and could feel relief, and that could feel, that I could feel at peace. So, um, so at a personal level, I was very grateful. The second part of your question is um, how come I've worked with so many different kinds of people, and I was just, again, very blessed, very lucky. Uh, soon after the training, I was hired by the Department of Alcohol and Drug Services in Santa Clara County here in California, which is located right smack in the middle of the Silicon Valley. Um, and the director at the time, Robert Gardner, um, opened up a department just to teach this understanding that we're going to be talking to people about. And so my job was to go into as many different environments and share this with people. So um, every year, for 10 years, at the beginning of the year, we came up with different projects and the projects included working at school with kids and teachers and counselors and principals and in jails with adults and youth, uh, an executive team, social workers. Um, and all along, actually, I have been doing consulting work. So, you know, I've had the fortune of working with Jack Pransky and Amy and um, gone to Tikkun and, um, you know, just really going to, to Argentina to work with some colleagues, Robert Charbet and Ken Manning and, um, oh my goodness, I'm forgetting her name. How can I forget her name? Well, it'll come back to me. Um, and going to Mexico too and work with a company that was an agricultural company and work with uh, one of the executives there. So i just been... Um, Really lucky, really blessed. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, and I've had the opportunity to just work with a variety of people. Um, the reason why I can work with a variety of people, even though it may seem very like a very different groups of people, is because beyond their differences, really, each one of these people is just a human being, right? And so if you understand at the very fundamental level, at a very basic level, how human beings function, that is an understanding that is universal and transcends cultures and genders and countries. And people get a sense of the truth. And so that's how I've been able to work with just a variety of people. Yeah, you're reminding me that, you know, there are a lot of stuff that's written, a lot of stuff out there that's written and talked about, and even kind of in humour, we really focus on the differences between people. And and what I was reminded of that was that, and, and the work you do, the work I do, and, and many of the people that we've had, everyone that I've had on this series, really focuses on what's the same between people as opposed mm -hmm. to what is the difference. And, mm -hmm. and from that sameness is what what enables better communication, better relationships, um, deeper connections, as opposed to doing, trying to do that from a, um, a, a place of people are different, people aren't the same, people are um, 
bad or good, better or worse, uh, you know, and, and on, on a various sliding scales. Yeah, from Mars or Venus, right? I don't know if that was popular all around the world, but it was a book here in the States that was very popular. I think it's men are from women, men are from, from Mars, Mars, women, women are, are from Venus. Yeah. Venus, Venus, right? And uh, like you said, it's interesting because as soon as you stand on that platform of difference, it creates a distance, right? Like there's something different about you. Which for me, it feels like we're put now on opposite uh, directions. And uh, as you and I know, when you understand the very fundamental functioning of a human being, uh, it just creates an understanding that at the, at the most basic level, we all function the same way. And a result of that is an immediate alignment and sense of connection to the person that you're around. Yeah. Mm. So... One of the things that I, I personally really enjoy in doing these interviews is listening to the stories that our interviewers tell us. And we've had some really powerful stories in the past and, and stories that have been shared. And I know when I spoke to you last time, you told me a, a fantastic story about how you met your husband. And because this is a relationship podcast, I'd, I'd love to get that down um, and tell as much of it as you like and, and um, mm -hmm. you know, self-censor, but hopefully not too much. But yeah, I, I just thought it was a really fantastic kind of live example of of, of what we're talking about and how that how that resulted in in you meeting your your now husband. Mm hmm. Yeah. So you know, I was divorced there, right? Like when I learned the principles, and uh, and then when I was working for the county of Santa Clara, one of the projects that we did was a community uh, project in a part of the city that um, needed a lot of support. And so I was there to do classes weekly for a few years. And my lovely husband, uh, Will, was working in that part of the city um, and he was employed by uh, the San Jose Police Department. So you just, just so to put it into context, I, at that time, used to work in jails, right? And I used to work with kids that were in gangs and um, adults that were struggling, which were the people that Will was actually arresting, right? I mean, we didn't know this at the time, but professionally, we came from different ends. And uh, politically, we come from different ends, too. And uh, some of our belief systems are really coming from different perspectives. Uh, but the very first day that I met him, he came with a few of his his peeps, his officers, and I remember as soon as he walked into the door, thinking, "Oh my God, who's this guy? You know, he's full of himself." So it wasn't a good and first just, impression. No, it was. Yes, thank you. No, it was kind of like, "Ooh," you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've told this story in front of him too, you know. I just really thought he was very cocky and very, uh, um, he says self-assured, you know, and I just defer in my opinion. But anyway, so he comes and sits next to me and the whole time I'm just really not enjoying his company at all. Uh, and in conversation in that meeting, he asked me to go and do a class at the college that he was teaching uh I think it was a drug class or administrative justice or something. And this is part of what I did for my job. So I said, yes. So he said to me, you know, maybe it would be good if we had lunch before the class. So unbeknownst to me, he was actually trying to date me. And I just thought <laughs> that he was really asking me to, you know, do something professional here. Anyway, we meet for lunch. He finds out that at the time, actually, I was ending up a relationship. And honestly, if I didn't like him the first time, after the lunch, I liked him less. And then after the class, I liked him even less, right? So, you know, he's like, well, you know, maybe I'll call you later. And I was like, well, yeah, okay. And then we just didn't talk. Um, I didn't think about him. I, it was not a good impression, as you said, first impression. And then... Um, 
six months later, I end up parking in a handicapped area, and he ends up, he actually sends one of his officers to give me a ticket. It was $280 in 2003, which was a lot of money. And, and just, so just, to be, mark- just to be clear, yeah. before we get a lot of abuse for you for parking in a handicapped space, you did actually have permission to park there, yes. right? And, yes. and you left enough room for people to, to go yes. past? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, yes, let me put this into context. Good, good question. I am not a thoughtful, uh, I mean, I wasn't thoughtless about that. So what happened is that I was in the class, I was about to teach the class, I got there to the um, the apartment complex. There was no parking. It was late. It was not the safest neighborhood. And I asked um, the manager of the apartment complex where I was teaching, where should I park? And he said, well, just park to the left of the ramp. Make sure there's plenty of space for the the wheelchairs, etc. So there I was. So anyway, what you know, I get this ticket, I go back to the police station, and I ask them why they gave me the ticket, and they said, well, isn't it obvious, right? I mean, you were parked on the handicap. I end up talking to Will, and uh, he ends up asking me, you know, how am I doing, and uh, never, he told me never to park there again. You know, I, I had a conversation and told him all my reasons. He took pity on me and uh, said, okay, fine, we'll take it away, but this will be the last time and never do it. Okay. And then at the end of the conversation, I told him that I I was no longer with a person that I was um, dating at the time that we first met. And he actually asked me out that same sentence, um, the next sentence, same first conversation, right? Like literally, it's like, oh, I'm so sorry, right? What are you doing Sunday? (laughs) Without skipping a beat. And, no, without skipping a beat. And without skipping a beat, I said, yes, let's go. So so what, so I'm, I'm interested. So what was it? What was it that made you say yes? So you've met this guy. You've not got a good first impression of him. That, that impression oh. got worse and worse. He's ended up giving you a ticket. Yes. yes. And, 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 and so what, what was it that made you say yes? Um, that is a great question. Well, first of my state of mind had changed completely, right? At first, when I met him, I was in a relationship. And um, so, I was, although it was ending, I was in a relationship. This time around, I was just dating. I was dating, right? So, I had opened up a little bit, a lot. And when we were having the conversation and he was talking to me about the ticket, um, you know, you know what happened is... In that moment, the second conversation, I completely forgot about my opinion, my first opinion about him. Actually, that's what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, because obviously, if I would have hold that first opinion, I would have never said yes, right? Yeah. And... And throughout our, um, throughout our relationship, one of the things that I've noticed that has helped us a lot is that we often give each other a new chance. It's just very common for us to, you know, if we get into a little tiff or into an argument, it's very, very common for us to... Um, offer the opportunity to start fresh. And I find that to be extremely helpful. You know, know that we don't have memories or we don't, you know, think about what we did last week. But overall, there's always an invitation to show up in a fresh new way. So that's what happened, locally mm. for me, right? Fortunately for me. Because it's turned out to be such a beautiful relationship and fun. And, you know, the other thing that, that happened when you and I were talking is that I was sharing with you that at that time I was not uh, trying to have a relationship. I just wanted to have fun and get to meet people, you know, and I told him that. I said, you know, I'm dating and... Uh, I don't want a serious relationship. So I think because I was not looking for something serious, it opened up the 
the feel for uh, enjoying whatever we did without having to make things happen in a certain way. So, um, so I would highly recommend that to people <laughs> in any relationship, you know, just to, if, there's, if, if people are trying, tr- trying to start a relationship, it's so nice to feel that freedom of being with another human being without any pressure. So, so you've, you've now got this, this, this guy that you're dating and you're, you're very, mm-hmm. very different political backgrounds, diff- different mm-hmm. views on the world, different belief systems. Mm-hmm. It kind of throws the idea of compatibility out the window because I think you said to me mm-hmm. as well that if you'd, if you'd picked your ideal partner or even a partner and, and written them mm-hmm. down on a piece of paper, it wouldn't, mm-hmm. wouldn't have been like your husband. No, no by description. No, no. Uh, you know, actually, I was dating another guy at the same time that fit my description. <laughs> and it was a terrible experience, actually. It was a terrible experience. There were two things that made it terrible. One of them is that I was really attached to dating him. And the other thing is that um, I just noticed that even though on paper, like he fit the, the bill, right? He had all the rest of it. There was really not a sense of flowing. There was really not a, it was just complicated. And with Will, even though, you know, today we're very different, you know, he'll say things and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> um, I mean, really, just yesterday, <laughs> just yesterday he said that. Um, what I've learned to, what I've learned to understand is that we can connect with people at different levels, right? I can connect with people's opinions, people's likes, people's likes, people's politics. And that works really well if those opinions and views and politics are similar to yours. But when those opinions and views and politics, etc., are different, what tends to happen if you're connecting at that level is that there is an immediate clash. And the truth, Hankush, is that there is not another human being on the earth that would think exactly like me in every single issue, right? We all have different opinions. Um, And I think that's when people actually have relationship problems, right? When you're trying to connect to a human being at your opinion level or uh, your belief system level. Will and I have a connection that transcends that and transcends the, what I call the surface of a human being, you know, it transcends all the likes, dislikes and um, preferences. And we actually have a connection that is at, at the deep, deeper level and really understanding that we're both human beings trying to have a good life, a loving life, a nice marriage, and that we're doing the best we can and that some of our opinions are very different from each other. Um, And, you know, just sort of to go back to the beginning of when we met, our friends are very different. So my friends are different from his friends. They have very different opinions. And my friends were giving me a hard time because I was dating a cop that was, um, you know, a Republican that did the job that he did. And, And I just heard them be very judgmental towards them. And then he would share comments about the kinds of comments that his friends were making to him. Like, how could you go out with her? You know, she's so liberal and and I'm not even that liberal, but, uh, you know, she does this. I mean, she. do you realize that she actually works with the people that we arrest? And she's trying to help them, right? So it's almost like both of our friends were very judgmental and couldn't see that we were both people trying to have just a very nice life. But fortunately, Will and I saw that. 
So, I mean, it's it, it's a it's a great story, and and I mean, I'm, there there are so many things going through my head, and one of the things I wanted to ask you is, has that now changed you? Because you obviously had your views and opinions, and and still do, and have your belief system, which is different to your husband's. Mm-hmm. But but through being, I guess, open minded, being less judgmental. Um, giving him a chance and now, now end up marrying this guy has that mm-hmm. made you more open minded even more so more, or, more, mm. or, or, or are you guys still very much firmly in your oh well this is what I believe that's what he believes and that's it and you guys just don't discuss that or, or, or are, you, are you able even to have those conversations and be respectful of each other's different points of view and, and even open to changing your points of view Mm-hmm. Well, I tell you, everything, all of what you've described happened and probably will continue to happen. Um, one of the things that happened is that I had a very judgmental opinion about police officers because I, I was, like you said, I was born and raised in Mexico and in Mexico, um, police officers are part of the problem in many cases uh, with crimes, etc. right? So I just, I didn't know that I was very judgmental to police officers. And in being with Will, I realized, wait, police officers are people. They're people too, right? And in listening to him, I realized, you know, he just really wants to protect people that are suffering. And in having conversations with him, I just realized, the beauty of his intention. And it's the same as mine. It's just that he goes at it in a different way. So I've just actually become to be grateful for the work that he did, you know, and the weekends that he didn't spend at home and the 24 hours a day shifts that he worked right, and the impact in his body. So really what's happened is that there's a deep, deep appreciation for his commitment to humanity. And I would have gone about it differently, and I do. But I just have an appreciation for him as a human being, and that makes me feel closer, and it it allows me to listen deeply, right? Uh, If I had to guess, I would tell you that that's probably the same thing that's happened to him, right? We've We've just had this beautiful opportunity to look into each other's world and appreciate the effort that we're trying to make to help our fellow humans. It's very, uh, touching and um, it reminds me of something that I I said to a client recently and it just kind of came out of nowhere which is most of us end up hanging out with people that are the same of us same as us (laughs) and spending time with people who have similar belief systems to us similar views to us people that agree with us for obvious reasons and yet it's often the people, and I know this is true for me, it's often the people that are very different to us, that we do disagree with, that we mm-hmm. um, are completely different ends of the political spectrum or have completely different belief systems that give us an opportunity to learn the most about ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I, I've kind of really heard that in your story. And what occurred to me was how incredible, because if more of us took on board that kind of view and, and were, were more open to meeting people that were so different to us, whether in a romantic sense or in our friendships or, or anything else, then it would just make the world a much better place and have far less conflict, mm. whether, mm. whether in our, our family, in our neighbourhood, in our state, in, in our country or in international you know, relations. And we can mm. see evidence of that every single day in the news mm. about how how people do concentrate going back to what we're saying on the differences as opposed to like you said seeing that you know people are just people and they're trying Mm -hmm. to do the best that they can do and that Mm -hmm. doesn't mean we need to agree with them 
but but seeing that that's the one thing that we've got in common and and, and approaching any relationship from that point of view you know is going to lead to a better outcome at the end of the day for for both parties yes it's just that yeah absolutely you know absolutely it's just that i think most of us get stuck at that opinion level you know or at the political view level or at the like and dislike level because it's it's what's um visible right it's what we can see it's what we can observe it's the comments that we can hear uh, and that's why I think it's been so helpful to really understand and see behind how human beings function. When you when you get to see like behind the curtain, when you understand that there is a core of our humanity that is that functions and it operates exactly the same way. When you understand that, and when you understand that human beings do what they do because at the moment it seems like the thing to do, even though a second later may, they may regret it. It just allows for the kinds of connections that you're talking about. You know, I have worked with people that have killed people. I have worked with people that have molested children. I have worked with people that, um, that are bullies. I have worked with people that have made decisions uh, for a company that were not the best decisions and abusive. And when you first are confronted with that, it's easy to get lost in opinion. Now, I'm not saying that it's okay to kill people, and I'm not saying that it's okay to abuse children, and I'm not saying that it's okay to hurt other human beings, right? That's not what I'm saying. But when you understand how powerful the role of thought is and that people have this capacity to think that they don't understand very well and that sometimes they feel compelled to do what they're thinking and then they later on they regret it, when you understand all of that, it allows you to see beyond it and actually have a conversation that can actually shift the person and ultimately allow them to have a healthier behavior. So, you know, I mean, I have done things that I wish I would have not done. I have had moments in my life where I'm like, oh my God, I just can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did that. Uh, and I don't mean it like in, in a good way. I mean, just in the worst possible way if possible, right? And and I have really uh, reflected on that. I have done the worst that I've done when when the quality of my thinking is at its lowest and where I just felt compelled to do it. And a second later, sometimes, I realize what happened. It's like I jump to action prior to taking a moment back. And I think in relationships, Ankush, we do this. We do this because we're fueled by intense emotion. And we don't understand the role of emotion either, right? So, I mean, I have said things that I I just wish, you know, I could have grabbed them as they were leaving my mouth and put them back, right? And then it's too late. It's heard. Um. And my husband has to, you know, he has said things that I'm like, I can't believe you just said that, right? And sometimes I get really, really hurt. And then a few, some time after, it all kind of comes in the context of, yes, as human beings, we can say some really mean things and do really mean things when we feel um, compelled in the moment. So in in relationship, it just creates such a beautiful um, space for both partners, you know. And this is true also of my brother. You know, I have my brother is also a police officer. He also uh, is trained to do all kinds of things that I don't know. Well, I wouldn't want to be trained, right? And his behavior, as you can imagine, is different than mine at times. And I just remember in the back of my mind, you know, he really is doing 
what seems logical for him to do at this moment. And what that does is that it really creates a connection with my brother that allows me to have conversations that bring us closer together, which is ultimately what I want in my life, right? I just want to have, I just want to have um, a sense of connection and companionship with the people that I love. So how long have you, you and Will been, been married now? Well, this lucky man has been with me since 2003, and we get married in 2006. Uh, and, you know, I hate to say this to you, but I mean, honestly, it just feels to me like we're on a honeymoon. Um, we are playful with each other. We are kind with each other. He's very supportive. Uh, we have fun. You know, we get into arguments too. <laughs> and, and and that's what I wanted to get to because you know people might be listening to this and think, oh well, Gabrielle is just one of the lucky people. She's just she's mm -hmm. just been lucky. And one thing that I found throughout this series is every single person that I've interviewed, they seem to be lucky <laughs> in relationships and. It doesn't seem to be a coincidence to me, looking at it from people that are, are, are teachers of this understanding of, of these, these principles behind state of mind, that they seem to have great relationships, they seem to have great marriages. So mm -hmm. do, do you share that view or do you, do you think you're just, you're just lucky? Well, absolutely, right? When you understand how something works, when you understand how the human system works, you're just able to let the benefits come to the table. So I function exactly the same way that any other human being, but I understand certain things about people and it's very helpful to me, you know? I mean, I have a very strong opinions about certain things. But I understand that when I feel very intense about something, uh, when I feel very attached to something, when I feel very reactive to something, it's not the best, um, it's not the best, I'm just not at my best, right? I'm just not. And I'll tell you, it was so funny because um, just this weekend we had a 4th of July party and Will said something, and it just pissed me off so much. It pissed me off, right? So I ended up doing something else. Like, you know, like when you just want to spew something back, right? It's just like, oh, come on, put your boxing gloves. I'm ready to go, right? I'm ready to go from the shoulder, right? And uh, there was another opportunity for me to be a smart ass with him back, right? And I tell you, I was, it was in the tip of my tongue the comment. It was just like, you know, in my tongue and out of my mouth, like just right there. And I started saying something and he turned around and looked at me. He goes, oh, honey, what did you say? And in that moment, there was another little space because we were having a great time. And I'm like, wow. Um, I can say it. And I can also be quiet. Right? So I just notice this moment. So I notice when I'm reactive. I notice when he's reactive. And that's just very helpful. Understanding how the human uh, system works, it's helpful. And one of the results is that it allows you to have gentler, kinder, better, funner relationships. And do you believe those, those are open to, to everyone? Anyone that's listening to this could have you know, an equally great relationship? I think anyone that understands how the human system works will benefit from the relationship. And one of the things that you said just a few minutes ago is that the people that you've been interviewing, they all have been sharing their marriages. Now, uh, I don't know exactly what they've been sharing, but I'll tell you, I do not have the perfect marriage. I mean, things come up all the time, you know, we invested in an apartment and we lost a lot of money. My husband had to have open heart surgery. You know, my brother got deployed. 
I mean, you know, their life is a contact sport, right? So it's going to come. It's not a perfect um, life. But what happens is I just have a sense of ease. I know that anything that comes my way, I will be able to navigate through it. Yeah. Um, and so I just think everyone would benefit from understanding how they function as a human being at the most foundational level. Yeah. I, I, I you know? totally agree with you. And um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll quickly share an embarrassing story. So last night I, um, I, was, uh, I was on a, a kind of client coaching online course thing that I'm doing with, with a number of guys. And I, and I get off the call and I'm like, oh, where's my wallet? I can't find my wallet. And um, I'd, I'd been a little bit naughty earlier in the day and got some junk food from, from a place when I was, I was driving back home. And I thought, oh, no, I've, I've left my wallet there. It's fallen out of my pocket. And um, the, the jeans that I was wearing, have, the pockets aren't, they're a bit shallower randomly. And, and my wallet does fall out of them. And I thought, oh, I've, I've lost my wallet. And, you know, it's that kind of place with heavy traffic and a lot of people there. It's, I'm never going to get it back and I've lost all my cards and everything else. So I'm looking around the house and I'm like, no, it's there. It's there. I've lost it. And then I, I, I drive back there in a bit of a panic. And part of me is going, you know what? It's going to be OK. Like, what's the worst case? You've got to cancel some cards. You lose a bit of money. You know, fine, even your driving license is in there. You can cancel it and get a new one. You can handle this. And on the surface level, there was this panic. And I got there, and they said no one's handed in the wallet. And I was like, oh, great, you know, people no good nowadays. No one helps each other, all of this <laughs> stuff. And something just spoke to me about, like, just, just slow down. You know, being aware of what, what, I, what I teach. It was like, take your own medicine. And, and as I was driving back and I slowed down... And, and I kind of knew this before, but I wasn't listening to this. And there was almost like a little voice telling me, you haven't lost your wallet. Mm. And as I drove back, I just knew more and more as I stopped panicking. I was like, you haven't lost your wallet. It's at home. And I'm driving back and I'm cancelling the card. And my mom rings me. Mm. And the wallet had bounced off the floor into my wardrobe right at the back where I wouldn't have seen it mm. in kind of like this freak thing and the weird thing is like I, this is almost freaky I I knew as I was driving back it, it was in my room I didn't know where mm. but I knew it was in my room and I and I and I would have found it and it kind of is just another example of stuff happens in life and we can either freak out and like have this huge panic and you know I would have cancelled all of my cards I wouldn't have looked in there I would have found it two days later right after I've created all of this drama and this mess but but slowing down a little bit for me being aware that our feelings aren't an indication of how well or bad life is going it it's just an indication of our thinking is really mm -hmm. really helpful to, to handle life with a bit more ease mm -hmm. and I lose sight of it do you know, I think what you're describing is really, and I, I wanted to, to make this point, um, um, so one of, you and I work with people in a way that we explain to them how every single human being on earth functions, right? It's just the way it works. We don't, we don't teach people, we don't share with people how to do their own lives. We're just saying, look, this is how it works. So what we know is, as human beings, we have the capacity to freak out. We have the capacity to stay calm. We have the capacity to stay neutral. We have the capacity to be dramatic. I mean, we, we can react and act in all different kinds of ways, right? But it seems to be, for all of us humans, that um, there is a deep source of wisdom inside of us that is there to help us out. And what happens often, as you were saying, is that when the mind is really loud and really 
panicky and really dramatic, it's very difficult to hear those bubbles of wisdom. And I think if we reflect, we all have had moments where we, we kind of had a sense, you know, we had a sense, and then we get caught up with the drama in our own minds. So I just wanted to say, Ankush, that what you and I share with people is, is something that people are already doing. It would be like going to a class to understand the wind if you wanted to sail, right? If you wanted to sail and you go and take a sailing class, the wind is not going to change for you. The wind is going to be what the wind is. But you will understand how to benefit from how the wind works so you can sail wherever it is you want to. And, uh, you know, in my relationships and in my marriage in particular, the benefit of understanding has been joy and has been ease and has been um, moments of quiet when I want to spit something out, right? Or really just vomit something over my husband. It's like, oh, wait. It's not mandatory. This is not mandatory. So, um, there's, a, there's a great sense of possibility. Actually, there's a great sense of possibility, and there's also a great sense of release, and there's a great sense to experience a relationship in a completely different way that you have not even imagined you could. Yeah. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. And uh, I think that's a great place. We've gone massively over time, but I think that's a great place for us to, to leave it there. And um, if people are listening to this and they've liked what they've heard and they want to get to know you better, they want to find out a bit more about you, What's the best way for them to do that? You can reach me at www.truechangeconsultants.com or they can contact you and you can send me a little text. And, um, you know, oh, oh, and then I just wanted to say that in November, I don't know if you, you said it or not, but in November, there's going to be a Viva conference uh, in the south of Spain. And it's going to be actually a very relaxed conference. Um, there's going to be flamenco dancers and lots of food and just a very relaxed time. And then we're also going to talk about how we function as human beings. So if you want to take a vacation in the middle of November, you're welcome to come and join us. I think it's November 14th through the 17th, I think. But for more information, they can reach out to you. Fantastic. And I'll, I'll put all the links online um with the with the with the interview um information and for people who want to contact me uh, they can do so via my website which is uncushjane.co.uk via facebook which is facebook.com forward slash uncushjane ltd or on twitter which is at uncushkjane thanks a lot gabriella it's been an absolute pleasure really enjoyed it and uh, i'll speak to the listeners next time this was the relationship series podcast if you like this episode, please share it and leave us your feedback online. Thanks for listening.